The preservation of the Developmental Biology film series was made possible by generous contributions from Distinguished University Professor of Geosciences, Lynn Margulis Terence Malick Chelsea Green Publishing The Politics and Practice of Sustainable Living The Hardy Lane Foundation The International Symbiosis Society Geobook Studio, publisher of The Biggest Picture. Hummingbird Films, producer of the documentary Symbiotic Earth. And supporters of the Lynn Margulis Archive at ScholarWorks. Ferns are among the most ancient of vascular plants and have been enormously successful in colonizing great areas of the earth. The ferns familiar to us in woods and rocky places are but one stage, the sporophyte stage, in an alternation of generations in the life history of these plants. The sporophyte alternates with the gametophyte, as we shall see. The tiny spores produced on a frond grow into small gametophytes. Some of these develop into heart-shaped female plants. These form reproductive organs called archegonia. Other gametophytes become male plants, which form antheridia. Sperms released from an antheridium fertilize the egg within an archegonium. From this union, the sporophyte develops. The spores are produced in structures called sporangia on the lower surface of the bracken leaves. An individual fern leaf produces millions of spores, each a single, tiny, haploid cell surrounded by a tough, resistant wall. The walls of each kind of fern spore are so distinctively sculptured that it is possible to tell the species from which it came. The spores of most species of ferns require light and moisture for germination. Light causes the spore to synthesize germinin. This substance triggers the germination process. First, a non-green root-like organ, the rhizoid, appears. Then, a green shoot-like filament emerges from the spore. The rhizoid continues its existence as a single cell, but the green filament cell divides, forming a short chain of cells. Each mitotic division of these cells is so oriented that it adds to the length of the filament. When the filament is a few cells in length, the orientation of division alters so that the young plant begins to grow as a flat sheet, one cell layer in thickness. This sheet commonly assumes a heart-shaped form. The notch in the heart is the apical meristem, where cells are small and rapidly dividing. As cells are left behind by this meristem, they enlarge to many times their initial size by taking up water into their vacuoles and expanding the area of the cell walls. Spores which germinate in darkness, or in pure red light, grow on and on as filaments. But when transferred to white light, 
they begin two-dimensional growth. In a population of spores shed in nature, many will be covered by leaves, twigs, and stones. Because germination requires considerable light, these spores will not be able to germinate. A few spores, however, located in light adequate for growth, will be stimulated to germinate. Those germinating soon grow into large heart-shaped female plants. The apical meristematic zone begins to secrete a substance called antheridogen, which, like germinin, causes germination of nearby spores which are lodged in dark places. The spores have sufficient reserve materials to form a filament even in darkness. In addition to triggering germination, antheridogen induces the formation of antheridia on the filaments. Within the antheridium is a central zone where numerous nuclei form, each becoming the nucleus of a single sperm. The antheridium itself consists of a basal cell, a ring-shaped cell, and a cap cell, seen here with the nuclei cleared in chloral hydrate solution. At the center, two spermatogenic nuclei have formed. Here, the eight nucleate stage has developed. In some species, there are as few as eight sperms per antheridium, in others many hundreds. When wetted, mature antheridia open and release their sperms. The vacuoles of mature antheridia take up water osmotically, causing a rapid increase in pressure within the antheridium. This pressure forces the cap cell loose and the coiled sperms pop out. One by one, the sperms become activated and swim away. Many millions of sperms can be released by a small population of antheridial filaments. The sperms are shaped like corkscrews and have numerous flagella. Archegonia are grouped in the region behind the meristem on a female plant. Each archegonium contains a single egg. The sperms formed in nearby filaments swim in all directions. The archegonia release a sperm-attracting secretion containing malic acid, which is believed to guide or home passing sperms into the archegonia. This can be illustrated experimentally by touching a drop of sperm suspension to the tips of two capillaries. One contains malic acid solution, the other a water control. At fertilization, the gametophytic or haploid phase of the life cycle draws to a close. The embryonic sporophyte emerges and later becomes independent of the gametophyte which bore it.
In a life history such as we have described, it is the sporophyte which is responsible for the wide dispersal of the species, and the gametophyte which achieves cross-fertilization and sexual reproduction. This alternation of sexual and asexual stages has been of major ecological and evolutionary significance in the phenomenal success of ferns in surviving longer than almost any other vascular plants in geologic time.